That was Daniel Schuler on Larry King Live. That was nearly two years ago, trying to explain why his wife, Diane, drove the family minivan drunk, killing herself, her daughter, her three nieces, and three people in another car. Eight people dead. But her husband says she was the perfect mother. She never drank, despite the excessive alcohol and marijuana found in her system. Now he's suing his brother-in-law. Why? Because he owned the SUV she was driving. And that brings us to our question of the day for you. What do you think about this man's decision to sue? I want you to give me a call, one eight seven seven tell hln Here's a tweet from Ray, by the way. It says, he says, quote, it does not make sense to sue the brother-in-law for letting her use the car unless she was drunk when he lent it to her. I want to bring back in my star panel, talk about this a little bit, because I got another tweet on this that was a bit similar from Tanya. She says, well, did her brother let her drive under these conditions knowingly? Drew Finling, what do you think about this? The, the theory both our tweeters are saying here and our Facebook viewers are saying, well, maybe there was some sort of knowledge on the brother-in-law's behalf and he let her drive this car. Would that make a difference in this issue? From a plaintiff standpoint, in bringing a lawsuit, it would absolutely make a difference because the, the theory would be, we're, we're so sorry about the loss of, of life, but you gave permission and you knowingly gave her the permission, to the, the right to use the car, knowing that she was intoxicated. Where I, I think um, they're going to run into some trouble is that this case was not only investigated by law enforcement, but a private criminal defense investigator. Mr. Ruskin obviously did a, a pretty strong job, and I, I think his appearing on the show really lets the public know that in cases like this and in criminal defense cases, both sides are doing a job of investigating and searching for the truth here. And that's what really has made this story so interesting to me, particularly the last five, ten minutes. So I'd love to know whether he has that knowledge of whether or not there was knowledge that she was drinking. You know, before we get to that, I want to take one of our callers because people have been calling in about this story. Mary in Michigan's with us. Mary, what do you think? Well, I just had a comment about the, the people suing the state as far as the, the improper signage or whatever. I just wondered, you know, if I was going the, the wrong way down a highway and everybody was coming at me and I was only going, the only car going one direction, if I was in my right mind, I don't think that I would stay on the road. I'd pull over to the side. Good point, Mary. And not only that, we're talking about somebody who, and Tom Ruskin, correct me if I'm wrong on this, going at excessive speeds, right? Yeah, she, the accident reconstruction put her at in excess of 80 or 85 miles an hour, heading southbound in a northbound lane with cars supposedly flashing their lights at her and beeping their horns. She didn't at all veer from the, what would be the fast lane heading north and the slow lane heading south but she was going at quite ex excessive speed. I think they judged the accident at over 160 miles an hour. And, and Tom, just want to ask this question. Drew brought this up, uh, and I want to ask this question as well. The idea that authorities here found a .19, or found that reading .019, I guess what the husband is saying at this point is, well, my wife didn't drink, so it's kind of like saying they're lying or maybe they're covering this up. Would that ever happen in this case? Would authorities take somebody's BAC, blood alcohol content, and make it up or try to make up an instance where they drank or used marijuana when in fact they didn't? Well, as a former law enforcement officer, I would say absolutely not. In this case, or as I said before, our examination mirrored the findings of Westchester County Medical Examiner's Office. But to Drew's point, it was Jackie Hance who loaned her sister-in-law the car to take all the kids, it was the only thing that they had, to get all the kids up to the campground that weekend. And our investigation did not reveal anyone who's ever seen Diane Schuler drunk or under the influence. She occasionally had a drink. No one's ever seen her, and that's the disturbing portion for me as an investigator going forward, I thought we'd find a bar. I thought we'd find that she was a mm. closet alcoholic. I thought that we would find that maybe she was a highly functioning alcoholic. If she was, 
she really had everyone fooled because no one's ever seen her drunk. Very uh, interesting. Ryan, let me, uh, I'm sorry, Drew, let me just, I want to sure. get to some of this, and then I want to uh, jump real quick to Michelle, let her weigh in on this. Janine tweets to us, horrible, this man is disgusting, trying to turn the tragedy into a payday, not to mention he needs to let his wife rest in peace. Sad. And Michelle, they're seeking unspecified damages. What do they get from this? What, is, right. what does Daniel get from this? I, I, what what could he get from this? Yeah, I mean, I mean it what's depends the reason on what for all this? Your wife oh, is gone. What do you well, get because, out of this? Well, he is he is obviously he's he's in denial. I, this is an incredibly challenging case. He's going to have zero sympathy factor with the amount of victims, the fact that most of them were children, and the evidence, assuming it comes in, that she was drunk and high. A jury is absolutely going to hate him and is going to hate this case. The plaintiffs are not going to be successful here. All right, Drew Finling, Michelle Suskauer, and uh, Tom Rushkin, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. A six-year-old.